Let's give you a scenario. Your gun is in your home. Someone gains access to your home legally or illegally, who knows? They get that firearm, they go do something with it. You were out of town for a few days. You were unaware of a break-in or that the firearm was stolen or taken unlawfully. Someone uses that firearm. You haven't reported it stolen yet. You weren't aware of it, but what this law says is that you are still liable for all of the incidents of property damage, bodily injury, or death because of that firearm. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you live in the state of California or you're just interested in what the gun controllers are planning next and you might not live in the state of California, you're gonna wanna stay tuned and watch this video. Today, we're talking about a crazy one about a law that would be used to potentially take your gun rights away from you, potentially price you out of being able to go own a gun in the first place legally. You can always own a gun whether or not you want to follow the laws, but if you want to follow the laws, things get a little bit more complicated, especially in states like California and we're seeing conversations happen that could affect people nationwide. This is one of those things that I think could spread to more states, unfortunately. Today, we're talking about mandatory gun owner insurance. This is something that we had previously seen in some cities like San Jose, which is currently being challenged by organizations like the Firearms Policy Coalition. This is a bill that would affect the entire state of California, being introduced by Nancy Skinner, one of the good old, good old Democrats that just cannot leave us alone. It's all we want, right? But they won't do it. Today we're talking about SB 505, a bill that was gut and amended to what was once about employment and labor codes and rights of employment is now being gutted and amended to affect your gun rights. Does that seem right to you? Let me know what you think. So this is a bill that was initially introduced because they want to crack down on gun violence and the dangers that is gun ownership in general. Because in some instances, when you look at the data in certain ways, there has been times when gun deaths, deaths where a firearm was the cause of death, the tool used for that death, was higher than the number of deaths from vehicular deaths. Now, interestingly enough, in the gun deaths, they include suicides, which include two-thirds of all deaths relating to guns, as well as firearm-related deaths, including law enforcement. Does that seem fair to you? Now, for the category of the vehicle deaths, they're using 2020 and 2021 data, where many people work from home, meaning that there's just less people driving. So when you factor in that the gun deaths, about two thirds of them aren't gonna be affected by insurance, and then you're comparing the record low data because people were forced to not go to work and forced to stay home, do those numbers really add up? Do you really think that gun deaths are killing as many people as vehicles when it comes to non-suicide related incidents? Not really, the data doesn't really show that. But there's lies, damn lies, and statistics. So this law, I want to read a few excerpts from it from, because it is actually a lot more dangerous than I initially thought. Interestingly enough, the only penalties that we have in the bill text now says that not complying with this law and getting caught would be a misdemeanor. How it would be enforced is, first of all, by cops. Cops will enforce this law. I know there's plenty of officers out there. I know many officers personally that probably wouldn't ask for this kind of thing, probably would not enforce this kind of law, but there are far too many who will. So if you're saying, oh, nobody's gonna enforce this law, enough people will, and enough people will get caught in the crossfire of these dangerous laws. So keep that in mind. Do you want a misdemeanor on your record, a gun misdemeanor on your record, a firearms related offense on your record? Let me know. So it says, this bill makes a person who owns a firearm strictly civilly liable for each evidence of property damage, bodily injury, or death resulting from the use of their firearm. Now that's just in the introduction talking about the purpose of this bill. When we get to the actual <laughs> penal codes, the actual laws, this is the most dangerous part. Section 27580 is added to the penal code to read, a person who owns a firearm shall be strictly civilly liable for each incidence of property damage, bodily injury, or death resulting from the use of their firearm. Notice how it does not say that you have to give the gun to someone. Notice how it does not say that you are exempt if you had it securely stored and someone took it or accidentally get a hold of it. Notice it doesn't say that if you let someone shoot your gun, they trip and fall and negligently discharge. 
that it's their fault. It's actually your fault. The owner of the firearm is responsible civilly for all incidents of property damage, bodily injury, or death from their firearm. There are some instances where that might make sense if you, as the owner of the firearm, acted negligently and handed a 50 Action Express Desert Eagle to a two-year-old. That makes sense, right? But every other instance might not make as much sense. So this subdivision does not apply if the owner of the firearm reports the firearm to local law enforcement as lost or stolen prior to the damage, injury, or death. So that part is very interesting. In the state of California, if you own a firearm and it is lost or stolen, you are legally required to, within I think it's like five days or something, like, there's, there's a certain period of time of when you become aware of the firearms lost or stolen or whatever it is misplaced, you are legally required to report that lost or stolen firearm to the law enforcement. This is very specific. It says that it doesn't apply if you report the damage or if you report that firearm stolen prior to the damage, injury, or death. Let's give you a scenario. You have a gun in your house stored however it is. Maybe it's securely stored in a safe. Maybe you just lock your doors. Maybe you got security cameras, whatever. Your gun is in your home. Someone gains access to your home legally or illegally. Who knows? They get that firearm. They go do something with it. You were out of town for a few days. You were unaware of a break-in or that the firearm was stolen or taken unlawfully. Someone uses that firearm. You haven't reported it stolen yet. You weren't aware of it, but what this law says is that you are still liable for all of the incidents of property damage, bodily injury, or death because of that firearm until you report it stolen. Does that seem right to you? Now, a person who owns a firearm shall obtain and continuously maintain in full force and effect a homeowner's, renter's, auto, or gun liability insurance policy from an insurance insurer as defined by the insurance code, specifically covering losses or damages resulting from any negligent or accidental use of that firearm, including, but not limited to, death, injury, or property damage. How many insurance companies out there are currently going to cover something like this? I'm not aware of a single one. I'm not aware of any company that would insure unlawful use of a firearm. This isn't talking about USCCA, CCW safe, uh, safe life defense. This isn't talking, or that's not the right one. This isn't talking about any of the insurance companies that are basically just lawyers on retainer. This is talking about actual insurance for the unlawful use of a firearm. I'm not aware of anything like that currently existing, but that doesn't matter. Because if this bill goes into effect, they don't care if there isn't any actual services being offered. All they care is that you don't have it. And if you don't have it, they're gonna charge you with a misdemeanor. Because a person who owns a firearm shall keep valid and current written evidence of the coverage described in subdivision v B readily available at the location where each firearm is stored and shall carry such evidence whenever the firearm is being transported or otherwise possessed outside the place where it is normally stored. You are legally required to give that upon demand to a peace officer. So again, who's gonna enforce this? Cops, cops will enforce this. You get pulled over, they see that you have guns, they are legally allowed to inspect those firearms. If they see that you have guns in the back of your car, they're allowed to make sure that they're not illegal. They then might ask to see your insurance. And if you don't show them that insurance, you're gonna be getting a misdemeanor. Now, interestingly, normally when we see bills like this, law enforcement and government officials are exempt. Law enforcement are usually exempt even outside of the scope of their normal duties. This bill does not have a police exemption. If you think that police won't try to lobby for police exemptions, let me know. I think that police are going to lobby, not for this bill going away, the police are going to lobby for this bill to have a police exemption. And that is the proof that you need, that would be the proof that anyone would need to know that the police will enforce these laws. Because they do have an opportunity here. The police, currently, and the police unions as a whole, right now in the state of California, have an opportunity to try to lobby for this bill to be eliminated. But what is likely going to happen is that they are going to use this opportunity to lobby to get a police exemption for their officers, not just for during the operation of their duties, 
but for every moment of them existing in the state of California with a gun. That's what I predict is going to happen. I could be wrong. Maybe if you are a police officer and you're watching these videos, I appreciate the support. Maybe if you're a police officer and you're involved in your union at all, maybe you can be the change that you want to see in this world and use your political power to potentially stop this bill from existing and helping a whole lot of people out. Protect and serve. It's my call to action. You guys know the drill. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace.